Okay, this is our video demonstration of the Embron MB200B using the MB10 Compact uh, purifier for circulator box. This also has a spinner. There's the control box for the spinner here. We do have a button here that allows uh, circulation through the bottom of the box. Uh, two anti-chambers, large and small, both manually operated. Uh, I just want to, here's a control panel for the MB10. Uh, you can see we're at uh, 0 0.4. We can add a little pressure using the foot switch. And we can reduce the pressure again using the foot switch here. I have the range set here, so uh, to look at the range. Oh, I just want to point out the... Uh, Water is at 1.9 parts per million. Uh, I service the uh, moisture uh, analyzer using the phosphoric acid method, and uh, it's taking a while, but it, it is dropping. I, I expect within a day or two it should be below one. I verified that it is less than one using our house uh, moisture analyzer. So it's just the sensor needs to catch up uh, because of the service that was done to it. Uh, a few things to point out, we have a circulator here, you can turn it on and off, you can hear that it shuts off. When you want to do a regen, you'll press that button. Turn your vacuum pump on and off. And then you have a switch here for the light. Uh, our vacuum pump is over here. It uses uh, regular hydrocarbon oil. Uh, most likely I'll drain the oil before I ship it, so you'll need to uh, use about a liter of hydrocarbon oil. There's a sight glass around the front and it'll show you exactly what the level it needs to be at. Uh, we're using nitrogen as a purifying medium, a uh, purifying gas, inert gas. It has a regulator attached to it. The regulator does not come with the system. You'll have to provide your own nitrogen and regulator. Use a 3 8 inch line. Now what they're doing here is they're purging both antechambers using the cylinder, uh, the gas cylinder of nitrogen. So you have a line coming in here, and then you have another line down here that is labeled uh, inert gas coming into the manifold, and that's used to, for the box. And there's also a line down here where you hook up your uh, regeneration gas, which is uh, 95.5, 5 percent hydrogen, 95% uh, nitrogen. You need the hydrogen in order to purify the copper pellets that are inside your uh, purifier. The purifier media has been changed, so you got the uh, uh, mole sieve, copper, copper uh, catalyst, and then a um, molecular sieve sandwiched in here. And so as the uh, uh, gas comes from the box, it goes through the purifier, then the circulator, the circulator here, and it'll come back out into the box. Okay, uh, so that media has been replaced and we did two regenerations on it and it's uh, removing the uh, oxygen and uh, water vapor down to one part per million each. Uh, over here quickly, I just want to show you these, these are lines uh, opened up to uh, for your spinner. This line is uh, manual valve open and close as well as your container here. We'll, any excess that comes off the spinner will be uh, will flow down into here and you can close this valve and drain that out when you need it if necessary. Uh, here's our purge line that I showed you for the spinner. The recirculating line, so when that uh, button in the front is turned on green, this valve opens. You can see that the uh, light is on the uh, only. There is a vacuum line in here too to hold the, uh, for the vacuum chuck. This too also has a manual valve. Uh, you have a 110 outlet coming in. We're not using it right now, so I just have it hanging here. Uh, back here we have our oxygen sensor, blue, and here's our uh, moisture analyzer. This is an oxygen analyzer, and here's your moisture analyzer. Okay, continuing around the front, so uh, the gloves have been replaced. So you have uh, two sets of gloves. The filter on in the back here. Uh, that's Coming in and on the out, there's a 
called Solvent Trap, which has a carpet, carbon uh, media in there. Uh, there is a per quick purge valve up here. Uh, I don't want to activate it right now, but I'll, uh, I'll show you this in operation by uh, on the pressure. Uh, let's go back to our main screen. Just hit escape and get to your main screen. Down arrow, you can turn on your, your analyzers. They're both on right now. If you want to set alarms, for instance, here you can. Just step through this different uh, information on the, uh, the box here. It shows you the H2O status, O2 status, operating at hours of the vacuum pump and controller. And I'll just step back. And from uh, here, we'll go up to uh, working limits. So right now, I have the upper and lower limit set to uh, plus or minus 2 millibar. Uh, if I want to change that, what I'll do is go ahead and hit edit. It starts at the upper. We'll increase that to, say, 6. By pressing the upper arrow. Enter. It drops down to the lower one. And here we'll go ahead and change this to uh, three, and then we'll want to make it a plus. So what, what this will do is that, uh, keep the lower pressure at three millibar, the upper pressure at six. You want a positive pressure when you open your uh, quick purge valve. So here I can go ahead and open that up. The handle it has to be at least. Uh, I think it's two or three millibar in order to move the check valve in here, so it won't allow you to use the purge if you're under negative pressure. So this is a way if you need to quickly purge out the box. Go ahead and do that. And then uh, I'm going to go ahead and just reduce the lower here so I can, uh, it's easier to work with the gloves at a lower pressure so that you don't have to bite against them. Uh, again, hit the edit. Enter to hit the lower. I'm going to change that to a negative. And enter. At this point, using a push switch, I'm going to go ahead and reduce the pressure. I need to get back to the main menu. And I'm watch, watching my pressure here. I'm going to bring that to around zero. And uh, stick my hands inside. What we'll do next is we'll go ahead and uh, I have a little uh, device set up on the spinner. These are ambidextrous gloves, so you can use uh, use them for either direction here. All right, so you do have a lid here. easier if I use this little tool here. I got a little device set up here. This is a one inch chuck, rectangular uh, square chuck set up. You can see the openings right here. This device fits in there perfectly. I'll go ahead and place that on there. There is a uh, proximity switch here. The lid has to be closed. Now you do have the uh, couple options here. You can go ahead and hit the vacuum button here, which is right on the, on the uh, top. And then here's your vacuum gauge. I don't know if you're able to see that. But we're at zero, minus 0 0.8 bar. So you can turn it on and off here. Where you can go ahead and use your foot switch. We have a program set up in our SM180 Easy, and using the foot switch that's down here, a, a different foot switch other than the glove box. You, know, you can see that down here. I'll go ahead and hit that, and you can see the program is going to start. So it's running at about three RPM for 10 seconds. If you need to stop it, you can go ahead and hit the uh, foot switch or the button up here. You got to reposition. And you'll see it's going to kick up to 3,000 RPM. It's just a program we put in here for uh, demonstration purposes. I'm 
want to point out too, there's a little opening here that you can pop open. And I'll possibly do a dispense before you go ahead and hit the spin cycle. And I'll just go ahead and close that. And now you can see it's like a brake pin. Okay. And it releases the vacuum. So you can go ahead and lift this device off. Oop, I dropped it in. Kind of move this from an angle here. <laughs> and you can lift your device off. And go ahead and place another one. Again, you can use a foot switch or you can go ahead and use the buttons up on the top here. See, oh, the vacuum does turn on here so with, with, with the lid closed, but you, it won't allow you to start the spinning. So if you think you're good here, it looks like it's off a little bit. Let me hit this vacuum. Alright, so we're at 0.8, bring this down here, and we go ahead and hit start from the top. It'll run the same program. Alright, so we went through that already. Uh, the final thing here is that we'll go ahead and uh, show you the hand chamber. Here's your vacuum open and closed. Right now it's in a closed position. Here too, it's in a closed position. If you look at the evacuate, we'll be to the left, refill to the right. We can go ahead and refill the now this is tied up, tied to the nitrogen coming in, it's an 80 PSI, so they do have check valves on here. Not a lot of overpressurize it. There is a slide, a little slide or bucket in the trough in there, you can put the work in there, go ahead and close it up. They recommend you do three cycles, so we can evacuate. While that's evacuating, we'll go ahead and look at the top one here again. Make sure the vacuum is closed, and we'll just we'll bring in nitrogen from the bottle directly in here so it can so quickly that it can go. That's the recommended without pressure for the uh, nitrogen, baby, to the side. All right, so that's uh, From here, you can go ahead and open your uh, large antechamber and you know, there's a shelf, slide out shelf. Go ahead and put your work on there, close the door up. And down, not too tight. And then you can evacuate. So again, you want to do a evacuation refill uh, three times prior to opening the inner door. So I'll go ahead and recycle these two. We'll come back in a few minutes. We'll open the inside door. All right, as you can see by the gauges here, you want to be at uh, zero on the gauges. And once it hits zero, you want to shut the purge off. There are check valves on it, but you don't want to pressurize them at all. Uh, I've gone through this three cycles, so it's okay to go ahead and open the inner door. Of both the antechambers. And as you can see, you can slide your work in. Put it inside the glove box. When you're done, you want to go ahead and close the door. Make sure the shelf's all the way in. Bring that down, open it up. 
And the same with these smaller Randy Chambers. Handle here, open that up. And if you're in a small work, you need to introduce them to the glove box and you can have them get out of the top and put it inside. And then close that up. And lock that down. Okay, that's our demonstration of the uh, number on glove box.